Good. Thank you very much, Ram. Thank you very much, uh, all people, for coming here. And thanks very much to the New South Wales branch and the, the technical committee of the uh, conference for inviting me to give this talk. It's certainly a, a great privilege. Uh, we often moan that engineers don't know enough about corrosion, that if they knew a little bit more, it would make our life a lot easier. Having worked for a, an engineering company for uh, on and off for about 15 years or so, pleased to report that engineers do understand about one form of corrosion, and that's what I want to talk about, galvanic corrosion. They are aware that if you mix your metals, uh, you can have problems. But the, the problem is uh, uh, that my talk I want to talk about is some misunderstandings about that. So galvanic corrosion, if you do one of the ACA courses or some academic course, you will cover a lot of the things I'm going to talk about. Um, but if you just get a brief introduction at um, short courses or as, as part of some other um, materials course, you'll often get some uh, misunderstandings. So I just want to talk about the, the simple aspects of galvanic corrosion. This is not going to go into the academic research, mainly as a it uh, relates to buildings and things. So the sort of question I would get uh, at Oricon would be, oh, I have an aluminium window frame joined to a uh, galvanised steel beam, and uh, should I be using stainless steel fasteners or should I be using galvanised fasteners and do I have to insulate them? So they know that there's the problems there, but uh, it's not simply a matter of uh, joining metal. So you might find something like this in course notes or in uh, more basic textbooks. That uh, general rules of galvanic corrosion, when two dissimilar metals are connected, the more anodic metal corrodes most rapidly, the more noble metal is better protected and corrodes less rapidly. And then the second point that, uh, that they'll stop on, Potential difference between these dissimilar metals increases, the rate of galvanic corrosion increases. Well, that is misleading uh, at best, that is wrong uh, at worst. So what I want to talk about is some of the additional uh, issues uh, regarding galvanic corrosion, just to make sure people can make better estimates of what sort of problems they're going to have. Before I start, however, we need to recognise the contribution of uh, P.F. Thompson, who this presentation is named after, um, 1885 to 1951 or so, and he was the pioneer in this part of the world, the, the first person to get involved with corrosion. We've been very fortunate in the last 12 months or so, at the end of uh, this presentation last year by Warren Green, a lot more information had come in about um, P.F. Thompson. We used to only have one picture, now pleased to be able to actually have a picture of him in his younger days and actually doing some uh, uh, technical experimental work there. But uh, Warren gave a, a very good description of P.F. Thompson's work last year and he and Bruce Hinton wrote up an article in the journal uh, uh, earlier on this year uh, describing the work and referring to all his work there. So I don't need to, to talk a lot about that because, uh, as I say, a lot more work in uh, read that article um, by Warren and Bruce and you'll find out about P.F. Thompson. But as we say, he did really start uh, corrosion studies of corrosion science in this part of the world. Having a look through, through some of the work, um, he didn't actually do any papers that I could find directly on galvanic corrosion, but probably his best paper, and I recommend if you can get hold of it and read it, it's a very good one, um, some basic corrosion, and most of it is, is still quite valid today. Started off with this excellent um, comment around no subject of technical interest have prejudice and wrong thinking in the past so wrapped a web of obscurity as that of corrosion of metals. And as I mentioned before there, this can certainly apply to galvanic corrosion. It is one of the areas that uh, there is a lot of misunderstanding. So that, that comment there from PFT uh, is very valid to this talk. So what I want to cover today, just a brief history of, of galvanic corrosion and uh, talk about 
some of the issues, the potentials and the galvanic series, but then have a look at a little bit more detail about what is actually going on in the metal with galvanic um, corrosion, the actual corrosion rates rather than just worrying about the potentials. And then some of the factors that affect the extent of galvanic corrosion, that it's a lot more than just this potential difference. Uh, the alloying elements, presence of oxide or passive film, uh, the surface area, the environment, and try and summarise all that at the end with a, a, a practical galvanic series. So first of all, uh, all being corrosionists, uh, in our courses, in the ACA courses, we start off with galvanic corrosion. It's the easiest one to understand, and if you can get your head around the issues with galvanic corrosion, it helps understand the more complex forms of uh, localised corrosion and, and other forms. But the basic principles, just to review them, you have two dissimilar metals, one of them less active, one of them more active. The anode will start corroding, give up electrons that will flow over to the cathode, that will get taken up by various reactions in the electrolyte there. And uh, as long as we have a common electrolyte there, we have an anode electrically connected to a cathode, so electrons can flow from one to the other and um, metal will corrode away, giving up the metal ions. There'll be the cathodic reactions here taking up the electrons. So dissimilar metals, a common electrolyte, joined together electrically. The more anodic metal will corrode, the more noble metal will be protected. A very simple um, form of corrosion, perhaps the, the simplest one. However, the amount of corrosion that we're getting there depends on lots of things. First of all, how different they are in the, in the electrochemical series that we'll talk about in a minute, or the potential difference. The area of this one compared to this one. Uh, what is happening on the surface there? Is there a, a protective film? And how corrosive is the electrolyte? And we'll come back to those factors. A little bit about the um, history first. Uh, galvanic corrosion, I guess, really started with um, the person who's given his name to it, and that's Luigi Galvani, back in the uh, uh, late 1700s there. And he joined two metals and touched a frog's leg for some reason. That was uh, what he was experimenting on there and found that it twitched uh, when he had two dissimilar metals there. However, he got it wrong. He thought that uh, the um, electricity came from the actual frog's legs itself, like an electric eel or some other um, uh, living animal that actually has a, a sort of battery inside it. So uh, he, he didn't realise it was the two dissimilar metals that was creating the current. He thought it was something about the, the frog's legs. Despite that, he's uh, been immortalised in many words, galvanising galvanic corrosion, all sorts of things. So he's done pretty well despite getting it wrong. So uh, the next um, person, and again, his name is um, immortalised as well, and that's Volta, um, fellow Italian, although Italy was uh, lots of separate states back in those days. He looked at it a little bit more detail, and um, he actually noted that it wasn't some um, uh, living battery that was creating it, but it was actually the dissimilar metals, and he investigated a little bit further and found that it was those two metals joined together that was creating the electricity, and he investigated a few other metals and found that if he joined silver and zinc, um, then they, that gave quite a large current. However, really the pioneer for um, galvanic corrosion was our old friend Humphrey Davy, who often appears in, in these talks with regard to cathodic protection. He carried out, um, looked at Volta's work and investigated lots of different metal combinations there. He actually constructed a large battery and a whole series of them and used the, the current for that. And he actually discovered sodium and chlorine and lots of elements there just by electrolyzing water and other salts and things. And it's him that he's the one who actually found this relationship between the chemical affinity, the activity, the chemical reactions that are going on and uh, the electric current. And as a result of his work, he developed the first galvanic series. 
and one of his publications has this, and as far as I'm aware, this is the first time someone has uh, produced a galvanic series. He called it a galvanic circle. And his list was a little bit different from what we see today, but he had these different metals down one side there, so starting with zinc. And he said if you join copper, charcoal, silver, copper, tin, iron, mercury, then the zinc will corrode. Moving down further, iron um, corrode with these ones, tin with these ones, and silver will only corrode if you join it to, to gold. So we had this series there telling us which metals and which metals will corrode them, effectively a galvanic series. So Davy, as well as being a um, pioneer uh, with cathodic protection, I think we can claim him as the pioneer with galvanic corrosion, and probably this would, could be classed as the first bit of corrosion research, scientific research ever carried out. So Davy certainly an important character in our field there. There's further developments. There's this gentleman, Swedish gentleman, Vesalius. He um, d did more work on um, uh, Davy's work, looking at more metals and, and working out a little bit more, and actually came up with a, another electrochemical series. However, one of the problems was that they didn't have any way of measuring the absolute um, potential of each metal. It was only a, a matter of if you join two, which one's going to have a problem. And it wasn't until we got reference electrodes developed uh, at the late 1800s that um, we could actually get, measure some potentials and things. And as far as I'm aware, Ostwald, who won a Nobel Prize in chemistry, uh, produced a electrochemical series, wrote a, a textbook, and uh, uh, that's perhaps the, uh, the, the, the main um, final development there in galvanic research. If you look at books by Schreer and uh, Evans and others, some of the very early work was done nearly 100 years ago, Bauer and Vogel, looking a lot more um, scientifically at galvanic corrosion. And what they did is connect iron to various metals there and work out which one corroded and how much corrosion there. So this is just looking at their results. So iron um, joined to magnesium. The magnesium will corrode at an enormous rate. He's lost about three grams of metal under these um, conditions. Zinc, a little bit less effect there. Cadmium uh, also corrodes, aluminium. And then um, any metal more noble than iron, we'll come back to that later on, then it's the iron that corrodes. And interestingly, it didn't matter what metal you connected it to, but the rate of corrosion of the iron was much the same. And uh, we'll see that that is uh, an interesting property of iron that uh, it's not the um, potential difference, it's just if you join it to a more noble material. So lots of work done and, and, the, and the, in the last century, um, a lot more academic work done, but we'll, we'll stop at Bauer and, and Vogel's work as far as the uh, history goes. So